Hello and welcome to another How to Code Well web chat. My name is Peter Fisher. Today we're going to ask the question, am I too old to code? Am I too old to be in this programming market and actually get a job as a programmer if I'm middle-aged or if I'm older? Now, this question was asked to me by a 27-year-old quite recently, which kind of took me off guard. And this question has been asked for, for years and years and years. It's not just a question that is tailored to the programming or web development market, but pretty much every industry. It gets asked quite a lot by people who have done something completely different for several years and are looking for a change in career. So they, they are learning uh, new skills when they are perhaps uh, middle-aged or older. And the, the fear is that they, they just can't compete with those who come out of university or who have learned to program or just be a web developer from a very young age. Maybe they were trained, like I said, at university, so they have a degree to back that up. Or maybe they've just done a lot of online courses and they've got uh, like Plural Sites and Code Academy and all of that stuff. They fear that they can't compete with those kind of guys who are at a younger age. So I'm going to go through this article because this article has five points, five reasons, some of which that I really agree with, some of which I'm on the fence with. Uh, I'll go through this article. I'll then give you my takeaway at the end. So um, Natasha the Robot, uh, I'll put a link in the description below. Five reasons uh, you are not too old to learn to code. So she was asked by a 24-year-old and she says the story of a middle-aged programmer who goes to work every day and does his job is not as sexy for the media, but it's more realistic, which is in my opinion, pretty, pretty true. It's not as sexy and exciting as, say, uh, uh, someone who spends all of his, who codes through the night, who is one of the, depicted as one of these sort of hackers that um, that the movie stars uh, play that are like, you know, really young and they're wearing hoodies and they're sat in a darkened room and they just bash out a lot of code. Um, when you're, say, um, the middle-aged, you're a programmer in a movie or a film, you're often depicted as one of these guys who sits in a cubicle and wears a tie, right? The media, I feel, have got it completely wrong in, in terms of how they portray programmers, which is, which is a shame. She then goes on to say it's a bit like reading, and that kind of, to me, that kind of feels like it's oversimplifying coding. She does say it's coding. She doesn't say it's programming, though, which is good because that's quite a distinction. Uh, coding is not the same as programming, in my opinion. You can read a bunch of books and you can sort of grasp the syntax, but that doesn't give you the ability to actually write the application. That just gives you the knowledge of the syntax. The syntax is only half of the battle. It's, it's actually building the application and having the experience of building something that, that makes you a program, in my opinion. You can read how to do gardening, but unless you're doing the gardening, you, 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 know, you can't call yourself a gardener, in my opinion. This point here, I really like a different perspective. So a 20-year-old coder who's been coding all of his life has a very nav narrow perspective on life. They might do. Um, but look, the point here, which is really a good point, is that you you bring to the table a completely different set of factors that you perhaps wouldn't bring if you were um, much older. And when you're much older, you also bring a whole different set of things to the table as well. You're, you hit that sort of uh, age range. You have certain different influences on your life compared to what you were when you were younger. That's basically it. So if someone asked me when I was uh, 17, let's say, would I prefer to write Snapchat, build Snapchat or build an invoicing system? I would have probably chosen Snapchat. It's a fun, it's exciting app. And at that time of my, my life, I was a student, so there was a social aspect to that. Um, the invoicing system is very stuffy. It's quite a stuffy application, quite pretty boring. I mean, I would have gone for the fun, exciting app rather than the, the boring app. Now, ask me that question again when I'm 40, I would probably go for the invoicing system. Why? Because as a businessman, I send out invoices weekly and monthly. So I would, I do that quite regularly, whereas um, I don't send people snap, crazy Snapchat filters. I find invoicing far more important than Snapchat. So that's the difference. So you're bringing in different experiences and factors that uh, impact your life. I'm not 40 yet, but let's say when I'm 40, I'll have more... Um, more consideration, more influences 
on family, on, on, on property and on health than perhaps I did when I was 17. So you, you do bring in different things to the table and also you bring in different things that you've, you've learned before. So I mentioned before that uh, often people ask this question when they've come in from a different background, they've changed the career. Now I applaud people who, who change their career um, in their life. And they, they've done, say, a career for, for, for 20 years or 10 years, and they change the career, complete different direction. Because they they are bringing, because when they get to that career, the, the new one, the programming career, they're also bringing the knowledge of the other one. Uh, okay, so the next point is friends with money. So if you're older, you probably have friends who have money and influence and are respected in their fields. Think of how you can use your network to get leads for jobs and possibly freelance projects. You're, you're older, you've probably got people who are doing all sorts of crazy, wonderful things in their careers. Therefore, you've got a humongous network of, of people that can influence you and your career and can suggest things to you and your career. That's far, far more than, say, a 17-year-old who's just come out of out of university don't forget that that people who come out of uni that they are all on the same level they, they've been trained to a degree level that so many people have but with you you're able to bring the experience and the knowledge that you've had before in your in your previous career or what you were doing before learning to program and then she goes on to say if, if you're 40 uh, you still likely to have half of your life to live. Well, that's that's um, that's a good good thought. Um, now you can continue what you're doing now, or or expand your skills for the uncertain future. Coding skills could be something that keeps your job around uh, the next time layoffs come around, which is an important point because a lot of people now are looking to automate their what they do in their careers. There is this um, this sort of bubbling fear that uh, the media are trying to spin up about whether or not cr certain careers will be in existence within say um, 10 or 15 years time. If you read into that, the fear is that um, you're either going to be writing the program that does that job or you're going to be out of that job. I don't really know yet. I need to need to read into that a little bit more, but it, it it's certainly it's certainly where the industry is kind of focusing on right now, with um, programmers being more being used in more fields of the industry, and and stuff. Um, it's fun and it's challenging. So think about the worst case scenario. You learn a new skill, challenge yourself, have some fun, and feel a sense of personal accomplishment. So you get don't get a job, but you still have a superpower. <laughs> still have a superpower that you can use use any way you choose personally. Now look, I find programming a passion. It's a hobby as well as a job. So even if you don't make a career out of it, it's still a fun thing to do. Okay. You shouldn't be you shouldn't ever stop doing something that you you think is fun based on your age. If you're only learning to code just to get a job, then you're less likely to be successful in getting one. I'm not sure about that point. Um, you should learn to code because you think it's fun and you want to get a bigger challenge in your life. So the takeaway here is that you're never really too old to learn to code, to learn to program. And in my opinion, those who change their career in their life, I fully take my hat off to them because they've it's a bold move to change your career from something completely different. It is a challenge. It is a challenge. Let's not uh, sugarcoat this, but it's not impossible. Okay. So yes, you are faced with the fresh faced youngsters who come out of uni and they're perhaps learning coding from a very young age. Yes, you are up against them. But the one thing that you need to remember is that you have uh, a superpower that they don't have. And that is years of experience of something else that you can bring to the table. So my takeaway is, no, you're you're certainly not too old to learn to code. And I tip my hat to you guys who do learn to code at a, a later state stage in your life because it's a fun, challenging experience. And I don't think it should be uh, just stopped at a certain age. 
So I'm going to leave it there. If you've got any thoughts, comments, or questions, then bung them down in the comment section below. Let's have a discussion. Thanks again for watching. Do subscribe to pick up the tutorials that I do every week, as well as the web chats that I push out each Friday. Thanks again. See you again next Friday. Cheers. Bye.